Hi, I'm Jason Gorman from Codemanship with the second in our series on solid design principles. Today we're looking at the open closed principle. O is for open closed and this essentially means that classes should be open to extension but closed for modification. If you look at a simple example we have a Fibonacci number generator class which generates a Fibonacci sequence to a specified length. So if you ask for a sequence of length 8, it gives you the first 8 Fibonacci numbers. If you ask for 10, it gives you the first 10, and so on and so forth. We've been asked to add some new functionality that records the length of the last sequence that was requested. Now, to add this functionality, we could go in and we could edit this class. But let's assume that this class is tested deployed and it's working and other classes in our own code or in other people's code are depending on this class. So there's a bit of a risk in going in and noodling about inside it. We'd rather leave it as it is because we know that it's working. So what we can do instead of editing or modifying this class is we can extend it, create a new class, which is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to create a test class for this new class. Um, Let's call it a Fibonacci number generator, but it's got a history. It remembers what, what's been requested of it, and these are the tests for that class. And so we can add a test method like this, and this just tests whether or not when we request sequence I should uh, write that a little more eloquently when sequence is requested sequence sequence length is stored okay which means in practice, if we ask, for example, for a sequence of length 8, the minimum allowable length of these sequences, then our Fibonacci last sequence length should also be 8. Let's just declare that as a local variable. And call it a Fibonacci number with history. We can declare that class, put it in the source folder where it belongs, and we're saying that this is a subclass of our original Fibonacci number generator. So it does all of that that did and more. And then we can declare this method on it. Returns an integer. Sequences, sequence length is an integer. We'll set it to zero for now, knowing that that should fail. And then we initialize this variable with a new instance. OK, and then all we need to do is we need to request a sequence of length 8. Like so. Okay, so at this point, if I were to save that, I'm using JUnit Max, and as you can see, JUnit Max has run the tests um, once I save them, and it's reporting that this test is failing. We're expecting the last sequence length to be remembered, which is 8, and it's not, it's returning 0. Now, if I was triangulating, then I could go around the houses a bit on this, but I'm not going to do that for now, just for the sake of brevity, we're just going to put in a, a complete implementation here. So let's imagine that we've got a field called last sequence length. Okay. And we'll give that a default value of zero. And then what we're going to do is we're going to override our get sequence method.
So before we call the original method on the base class, we're just going to store the length of the sequence that's being requested. And then on our superclass, we call get sequence of length and we return that value like so. So now when I save that, you'll see JUnitMax is reporting that all of our tests are passing again. So we, we've added the functionality without upsetting or interfering with the original class, which means that we won't have broken necessarily any of the clients that were depending on that original class, and they won't have to be retested and redeployed. So that's open closed.